Anyway, so we're here at a house in the southwest suburbs of Chicago at a native plant landscape. You could see the scars from where we burned the image of St. Anthony into the ground, you know, part of the little skit we did. But anyway, that aside, this was a very a huge disappointment of a yard. This was very disappointing to come here and see this, and the homeowner's not very pleased with it, with it either. So anyway, we're going to check out some of the uh, mishaps that happened here because we don't want to be spreading bad ideas. Look, so right here you got a great example of how not to do a native plant landscape, okay? All right, part of the part of the greatness of doing native plant landscapes is you do it yourself. This is what happens when you hire a company or a production company rather hires a company that's used to doing, you know, bank landscaping, uh, high-end contracts for rich customers, etc. People who are archaically stuck in that English aristocratic plant design. See how everything is evenly spaced? Everything is evenly spaced. There will be no mixing of plants over there. See that? Look at that. See that? You got all the, what is that, viburnum or, I can't even tell from here, but you got all of them grouped together. It's really weird. It's really bizarre. They, and they didn't even remove all the grass. The show's called Kill Your Lawn. They didn't remove all the grass. We had to go in there and dig that up by hand. We dug that up by hand using sharpshooter shovels, those little trenching shovels. All right? That's how much we care about the project. Look, they put some sod back in. Because evidently they were, they were regretful about taking out too much. So we're going to plant a whole bunch of cool prairie and oak savanna shit here. We're going to go over there, you know, put some uh, hibiscus in that low-lying area. Some Illinois native hibiscus. I mean, I, I seen this, I almost shit my pants and started crying. This is such a conservative approach to native plant landscaping. Totally lacking that chaotic beauty and diversity of oak savanna understories or Illinois prairies. Not to mention the homeowner's a beekeeper and they planted, you know, 70% of what they planted here is grass. And they didn't even plant any of the cool ones like big blue stem or uh, sorgastrum natans or anything. I, I just, I don't get it. They got a liatris over there. That's nice. They got a single liatris. And uh, what else is over there? They got some bad, no, it's milkweed. They got two milkweeds and a liatris and then a shit ton of grass. And they planted, oh, over here they planted probably one of the most boring plants one of the most boring native trees you could find. We'll go look at it. Look at this. And here they got a dogwood. One of the most boring native trees. Not knocking. It's nice to have in a garden. But it's a major specimen tree. And the sun's that way. So they're planted, they plant it here. So it's going to end up shading out all this stuff. So that means you can't plant any of the cool prairie stuff there. What I would do, we're going to take that out. Move it over to the side. So there's, it's not shading anything out except the stupid lawn. Which they left about 50% of. And then, uh, again, they planted all these graminoids. They planted all these different grasses and sedges and shit. I can't believe why they would do that. I mean, that's just filler. Dude's going to be walking by this stuff. This is right near his front door. Why not inundate this? And it's the most, you know, full sun area of the yard, except for over there. Why not inundate this with all that cool native prairie shit? They got baptisia. That's nice. They got two baptisia, which is one of the coolest prairie plants. And then they got a shit ton of graminoids, and I, this is just, it's, I, I almost, I seen this, I almost cried. You know, I'm going to have to go into a deep dish coma late, later and just stress, stress eat. They got a Falco's nearby. Going to be stress eating at Falco's. Deep dish comas are real, too. You really got to watch out, you know. There's, there, you know, some of, those, some of that cheese, is, it's like an opioid effect. This is definitely the kind of yard you come out and see, and you go, oh, wow. I mean, it's, you know, it doesn't matter... I mean, I'm glad they're using native plants, but at the end of the day, it's, it's still banquet hall landscaping. It still looks like it should be in front of a bank or something, you know, or maybe a Walgreens parking lot. You know, I'm just, I'm going to go cry. I'm going to, I'm going to rip up half this stuff. I'll plant it somewhere else, pack it closer together, fill it in with diverse natives. Then I'm going to go cry and stress eat a, a deep dish pizza. So anyway, that's all I got for today. Have a good rest of your day. Go fix it. Bye. Okay, so here we are the next day after we went to town on it. All right, we were out here in the 95 degree heat, digging for six, eight hours, which is 95 is not even that hot to me anymore. But remember as a kid, that was hot. Where I live now, that's, that's chilly. What I would give for a high of 95 during the summer. Anyway, as you could see, we took out all the graminoids, or most of the graminoids, uh, the, uh, the Carex Pennsylvanica, and the other one was, I think, a, a Budalua. But we took all that stuff out, and we just, just packed it tight. You know, we had, but prior to this, we had, you know, two and a half feet between plants. You know, that nice, nice, rigid, nice, rigid lines. We broke that up, 
packed it dense. Try, and it's not dense enough. We just ran out of plants. We are going for that beautiful cast of the prairie. All right, big blue stem. There, there wasn't even any big blue stem. One of the most important grasses in the prairie. It wasn't even any big blue stem in the original plant. We put Silphium laciniatum here. I almost wonder if that's not going to be enough sun for it because we got trees to the south of us. But this does roast for six hours, seven hours during the summer. But that's a really, you know, warm, loving, sun loving plant. We got your iron weeds right there, your vernonia. Uh, we put the uh, Silphium uh, terebinthinaceum right there, prairie dock. We got uh, another Vernonia, got some Echinacea, got some Symphiotrichum. That was a beautiful plant we picked up at a Christy Weber nursery on a west side farm and garden. 2833 West Chicago Avenue, they're selling fucking gallon pots with a giant, just incredible, incredible selection and really healthy plants too. The really impressive root balls. More Silphium, we got that from Prairie Moon Nursery, mail order. They said that's a flat of 50 plugs, totally worth it if you're doing a prairie restoration. Got a Eupatorium in the background there with those white flowers, as you can see over there. Uh, we planted a bunch of Joe Pie weed too. Planted one right here, and uh, the Baptisia, that was part of the original plant, which was cool. We got Liatris right there, the Blazing Stars, which I'll give them that. That was already there, that was good. But we just packed it dense. We packed it denser. Because remember, you go to a prairie, you can't even see the ground, it's so dense. Down here, Moved all the graminoids they had there, the Carrick's and the Boodaloo and stuff. They're nice. They're nice natives, but you don't want 70 of them. So we took those out, put a nice uh, compass plant, Silphium laciniatum in the ground, more Joe Pie weed. Got some uh, Lobelias and Physostegias over there. The obedient plants, see the Lobelias, that purple one. Physostegias, the pink. Put a bunch of solid dagos. Not the uh, one you see on the size of the freeway to Semper Virens, though I like that one too, even though it's technically from another state. It's fine here though. It's been here for a hundred years. It's doing a good job feeding a lot of pollinators. We've got the uh, uh, the showy golden rods right there. Bunch of nice stuff. Look at those lobelias. Like why were these not in the original plant? There were a couple, but they were just small ones. I don't know if they were having trouble sourcing plants or what. But uh, and then over here, these beds weren't even here because the original landscape plan kept so much of the freaking lawn, which was brutal so this we just dug out by hand got a truckload of free mulch went and picked it up backed the truck up Al did a really nice job with this uh three-point turn right there dumped it here we dumped a shit ton of mulch and then we just and again we went we went for density but this is not enough okay we put the pycnanthemum the mountain mint wonderful member of the uh, oregano family uh right there a uh, bunch of pycnanthemum there's another pycnanthemum right there virginianum we went dense with, uh, we got a well, single Hypericum in there, single native uh, species of St. John's Wort. There's a few hundred species in that genus. Uh, and then this, this gets full sun right now. It ends up being shade because you got a linden tree behind me later on. But, you know, we got the Helianthus mollus over there. Uh, I believe, did we get some Heliopsis too? I don't know. Anyway, we got a bunch of nice stuff. But again, it's still not dense enough for me. We just ran out of plants. But, you know, the homeowner, Dave, is going to come back and uh, you know he really enjoys this. He's gonna he's gonna go dense with a bunch more stuff over there. Since that's a low lying area, right over there we got a hibiscus moshuetos, the native Illinois hibiscus, because they love that water. They really thrive. The swamp rose mallow they call it. And Euphorbia corallata. This the uh, the landscaper put in. This is a prairie plant, but it was up against the house in complete shade. This is a shade intolerant plant. They like the full sun. So we just went ahead and moved some of these to a spot where they're gonna like it. So again, I just told the homeowner just water the shit out of all this stuff uh, as long as it's warm out, and uh, you know it'll love it. And we put this bed in over here too, so you can still see the the, the burned lawn. There's still so much lawn it makes me uncomfortable. But uh, we got the, what is it, the prairie sundrops, the Onothera. I got Ilex verticillata over there. Winterberry holly, which is in the same genus as Yerba Mate, the Ilex, the hollies. We got Symphiotrichum noviangli, which is a fucking amazing plant. It's four feet, five feet, six feet tall, covered in big pink daisies. Pink daisy flowers, important for the pollinators. More that that uh, that uh, Helianthus over there. Molus and another hibiscus, which is, you know, I, I think this should be wet enough here. But look at how rich this prairie soil is. It's not pretty, it's probably more of a bog was here because you got a pond across the street, but just rich black, just incredible, incredible soil. That was, uh, we got more Vernonia over there. So packed it dense, not dense enough, but it's better than it was before. All right, really, that's all I got. Now go fix it, bye.